All right, how are we doing, everyone? <clears throat> I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes, wait for more people to jump on. And uh, yeah, we'll get this started. All right, so for everyone that's on already, how are we doing, everyone? Hope you're having a good day so far. I am kind of tired. Um, I worked last night at the nightclub. It was college night, so it was pretty, pretty busy. Probably one of the busiest. Um, Wednesdays I've had in in quite a while so I got to work I'm actually the last bartender to clock on and um yeah it was it was pretty busy there's a line out the door already around the corner so it uh it took a while so uh it took a while to get the rush cleared once um you know everyone was uh inside already getting drinks or whatnot so it was pretty busy but it was a it was a rough night um, quite a couple, quite a few fights on the dance floor. Quite a few people that thought they were slick giving underage people drinks, and it was, it was a nightmare. So, I'm just gonna wait a couple of more minutes to see if anyone joins on before I start talking about, um, yeah, basically about how I did stuff like that. Um, sorry about that. Gotta important text message. So yeah, basically it was a, it was a pretty, pretty busy night, a stressful, a lot of jerks just trying to give underage people drinks and it was a rough one. So yeah, um, like I said, we're going to give it a couple of minutes, see if I can get anyone to join on. Yeah, but yeah, things other than that, things are pretty good working both jobs. Um, yesterday, I, I did a double shift, so both jobs are fairly busy. The hotel was kind of busy. The nightclub was, was slammed, so it was it was a steady night. Um, you know, when I work, I'd rather be busy 100% of the time than not busy at all. Um, just because, you know, if I'm at work, I'd rather make money. I'd rather stay busy. If it's not busy, you know, you're just kind of sitting around and it's boring and yeah, so I'd rather be busy than not busy. So how's everyone doing? Let's see who's online. So yeah, it's uh it's been one of those uh those weeks though, but one job is picking up, like uh, I'm seeing an uptick in guests and everything, so that's been good. Um, the other job has been kind of slow, but that's I guess normal this time of year because a lot of uh, like a lot of college students are away for the summer vacations or whatnot. So um, I guess it's kind of normal to be a little bit slower this time of year, but it should be picking up again. Um, from what I'm hearing is next month, so August should be a solid month. So who's online with me? Let me know in the chat who's online. Where are you, where are you watching from? I'm also kind of playing around with the times. Like if this time doesn't work out for me, I can choose a different uh, time to live stream. You know, um, I, I realize that I have a lot of uh, viewers from different parts of the of the world. So I'm also going to be playing around with. Uh, with a time, if this doesn't work out, I'll choose a different time and kind of go from there. I tried getting um, my stream lab set up for this lab, but it didn't work out, unfortunately. Um, I have to play around with it a little bit more. Basically, I had it set up on my old laptop. Um, I kind of had to hire someone from Fiverr to help me set it up. But when I got this new laptop, unfortunately, there's no like cloud thing on the old laptop to be able to save it and then have it on this one. I have no idea what happened. So, yeah, I wasn't able to. Uh, I wasn't able to get it saved, unfortunately. So um, I have to kind of start from scratch on this new laptop and get Streamlabs all set up. Streamlabs is like a live streaming uh, gateway. A lot of people on um 
Twitch use it. A lot of people on different uh, platforms use it. What's up, Justin? Hope you're well, buddy. Just going to wait and see if anyone else jumps on. Um, yeah, I wasn't able to get my stream lab set up for this uh, live stream. I have it set up on my old laptop, but um, I thought there's like a, f like a function where I can save it on my old laptop and then just log in to this one and, you know, transfer all the settings over. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. So it's like I'm starting from scratch and it's so confusing. I am. I try to set it up on my own, but it's super confusing. So on my old one, I had to get someone on Fiverr to uh, to help me set it up. And on this one, I just have no idea. I've played around with it. It's it's super confusing. I know it's really popular, like people on Twitch use it. People on YouTube use it. Um, Streamlabs is popular. Um, OBS is popular, but yeah, I got to get it set up. So y'all don't have to see my background like this anymore. But what's up, Justin? Thanks for being on, buddy. Yeah, I'm still giving it a couple more minutes. See who else jumps on. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a weekly thing I start doing. Um, I do get a lot of bartending questions, you know, um, even like guests at my at my at my job, people telling me, you know, that they've always wanted to bartend. They just didn't know how to ever get into bartending. So I get a lot of questions about that. And then, you know, how much money can be made in bartending or whatnot. Obviously, that depends on um, where you work at and stuff, you know, um, where you work at it has a huge, huge uh, dependency on what kind of money you can make, but there's definitely money to be made in bartending. Uh, just keep in mind that when you're a bartender, you do all kinds of stuff. You're not just a bartender, you know, you also do, um, you're a therapist, you know, you're a cashier because you have to ring in your own sales. You have to do all that stuff. Um, but yeah, you're, you're all kinds of stuff when you're a bartender, you're, you're a therapist, you're everything. Um, so yeah, but there's good money. If you, if you make a solid, uh, you know, a name for yourself wherever you work at you can make some good money um you know regulars building up a regular clientele you know a lot of little things get to know your people that's like the best advice i can give you for being a bartender is get to know your people like my two jobs are two different type of jobs right i work at a bar at a hotel and then i work at a big nightclub um that's 18 and up you know so but get to know your people like at the hotel you, we have a lot of business people, right? So people come and stay there for two or three days, then you won't see them until a month later or three months later. But if you can remember, wow, that guy was last, that guy was here last month and he likes ordering, you know, a uh, dirty martini with Tito's or whatever, you know, or dirty martini with, I don't know, um, gin. If you start remembering stuff like that and they come back like a month later and you remember them, not only are they going to be super impressed, they're going to write reviews about you. You know, they're going to tip you better and they're also going to be looking for you. So they're going to say, hey, do you work tomorrow? I'm here tomorrow. I'll come get a drink from you. So it really helps out to do that. And then also, um, you know, at the nightclub, even it's 18 and up at the nightclub, you know. So um, if I remember the people coming up, that makes a huge difference because at the nightclub, like last night, there's four other bartenders on, on with me. So if you give them a reason to come and see you, your sales are better, which is going to impress the owner, the management. Your tips are going to be better. And they're going to come look for you when you work, you know? So, um, yeah, but being a bartender, there's a lot of science behind it too, but it's a lot of fun. I really like it. Um, hey prep, how you doing? Hope you're well. Um, yeah, hope you're well, hope you're well in your end of the world. And, uh, Justin, let's see, work was busy yesterday. Work was really, really busy yesterday. So I got there. I'm the last bartender to clock on. Um, it, it was rough. Um, there was already a line out the door and around the corner when I got there. Um, so I couldn't even park in the parking lot. I had to park across the street. Um, yeah, it, it was, it was, uh, it was a busy night, but there was a, actually a couple of fights on the dance floor. Um, and also there was a couple of people that were trying to give under underage people drinks. So I had to fight people. Um, I don't know if security was just that busy that they weren't kind of coming around to my side of the, of the bar, the nightclub. So I had to do, I had to do a lot of uh, bouncing, a lot of security stuff myself. Um, yeah, I, there was a table sitting right next to where my well is at, and they were the one trying to feed people underage, underage people drinks, you know. So I remember telling my bar back, I was like, they're up to some shady, shady stuff. I know they are. I can feel it. And sure enough, they were trying to put um, adios 
drinks and um, vodka Red Bulls and water cups. And I told my bar back, I was like, this is one of those guys at that table. I'm pretty sure he's going to do some shady stuff. He walked right by, right back to that table, poured into a water cup. So my bar back, I looked back, he was gone already. He went right on the corner. I was like, you're done. Get out. And he literally grabbed him and threw him out. About an hour later, I was like, this is another guy. I'm pretty sure he's up to some shady stuff too. And sure enough, went back and gave another underage kid a drink. So they both got kicked. I was a little uh, frustrated because I felt like me and my, my bar back had to do a lot of that stuff. And you know, security should be doing a lot of that stuff. So I understand they get busy, but it wasn't, it wasn't good anyway. Um, Amy, see, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but hope you're doing well. Um, thanks for all your support on my Mexico trip, uh, my, my Mexico videos. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Rosarito is a lot of fun. It was surprising how expensive it got, but I love Rosarito a lot. Um, I have a lot of love for that town. You know, like I love beach cities. I love the beach. Um, I love just like drinking right in front of the beach you know like there's nothing more relaxing to me than just being right by the water hearing the water sound having a beer having a drink whatever you're having and i love the vibe there but yeah unfortunately it's gotten so expensive though um you know i'm just shocked at rosarito and how how more expensive it got like um papas and beer is one of the popular nightclubs out there and i was kind of shocked at you know getting i want to say it's like an eight ounce cup a plastic cup it's like six dollars for a well drink which i know you guys are probably going to say that's Come on, that's not a lot. And you're right. For U.S. standards, for probably Western standards, Canada, U.K., it probably isn't too expensive. But for Mexico standards, I feel like that's kind of pricey. So, yeah. And then I got a, a margarita. I had, I'd actually asked for a Cadillac margarita, but I'm pretty sure they didn't put Grand Marnay in it. I didn't taste it. I, I didn't see it. And that, that was like nine fifty, so almost $10 for a margarita. Now, that one was a bigger cup. Um, but, yeah, still, I mean, for Mexico prices, I was kind of pricey. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind, hit the like button for me. It helps uh, YouTube promote my live stream a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, prep, you're, you're hundred percent right. And that's why I feel like my, my tips were kind of impacted last night because, um, you know, here I am. And even though it was a table closest to me, um, you know, that table is probably only five or six feet away from my well, but when, there's probably about 15 people sitting. That table is meant for probably about eight people. I think it has probably about eight chairs, but there was probably about 15 people just crowded around that room or around that table. And anytime someone would come and get a, a, a drink and now they have wristbands, right? So I went, well, any night of the week, anyone that's 21 and over and can legally drink has a wristband. Anyone that cannot has stamps on their hand. And that's how we know they're only 18 to 20 and they cannot drink. Um, but on Wednesday night, on college night, we have a rule where, um, you know, anyone with the wristband can only have two drinks. And that's because we know people are going to try funny business. People are going to try to find uh, buy drinks and go give them out somewhere. So on Wednesday night, we have a we have a rule, only two drinks per wristband. And um, people were coming up and getting two drinks at a time. And then five minutes later, six minutes later, coming back up and getting the same drinks, you know. So that's kind of a that's kind of a, a red flag for me. If you're going through drinks that fast, you're probably giving, you know, you're probably giving, giving drinks away to underage people. But yeah, anytime they would walk right back to that table and then they would all turn their backs to my, my bar. Um, they would kind of crowd it, crowd around in a little area. And I knew they were pouring them in red cups and, and water cups and stuff. Um, but you're right. How can I concentrate on, you know, I had long lines at my well. Um, I probably had 15 to 20 people in line at any given time. And, you know, how am I able to focus and do my job when I'm also babysitting them over there? So, um, yeah, I didn't like it. And I know my tips were impacted yesterday because I'm serving drinks while they're trying to give me their drink order. I'm over here kind of looking at that way from the corner of my eye, you know? So I, I know that definitely impacted tips. So I, I, I didn't care for that. And I talked to the owner, but I know the owner was busy, you know, with all the money at the end of the night. He was just like, oh boy, yeah, we'll, we'll have to, you know, keep an eye on that next week. But he didn't say anything, you know. Um, if it gets down to it, I know that the people that were kicked out last last night, and I just I will I will refuse to serve them next week. So if they come in, I'm just going to refuse to serve them. That should alleviate part of the problem. Um, they weren't tipping anyway, and on top of that, one of them had like a little cocky attitude. So it's like you know what, you're going to give me an attitude. You're not going to tip me, and I know you're breaking the law trying to give underage people drinks. So. Um, legally, I have every right not to serve them again next week. Actually, they should be, in my opinion, they should be 86. 86 means that they, they're kicked out and not welcomed back. If you're giving an underage person a drink, in my opinion, that's immediate grounds for 
getting 86 and not being able to come back in. Because if they try it last night, they're going to try it again next next week or the week after that, you know. I mean, that same group two weeks in a row that we've had problems with them, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of over that. Um, so <clears throat> one kind of other thing is uh, my uh, – my my tri- my trip. So basically, I have a Thailand trip planned for September. I'm about ninety nine point nine percent sure I'm gonna actually postpone that probably until November or January. Probably November though, and I actually might change it to the Philippines. So um, Philippines has always been on my bucket list, and um, I kind of want to try it out and see. You know, I feel like Thailand was always on my bucket list. I feel like I got to do it last year. I love Thailand. I loved it. I will go back again soon. But I feel like Philippines is always on my bucket list and, you know, it's something I want to try. So I actually might be doing Philippines instead of Thailand. So if anyone has any insight on Philippines, um, let me know in the chat, you know, um, what are what are the good parts of Philippines? I'm kind of thinking Manila, but I wouldn't be opposed to doing um, like a beach trip either. Um, I've heard good things about Bor. I think I think I I hope I say it correctly, but Boracay. Um, I heard it's a beautiful beach city, so, but I heard it's not too far from Manila. So I might do Manila for about two weeks, split into Boracay um, for maybe two or three nights and then go right back to Manila. I think that would be good, good for me. But yeah, if anyone has any insight on the Philippines, how are they doing? Are they kind of back to normal? Um, what are good parts of it? Let me know in the chat. I'd really appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, if you're watching, thank you, though. I appreciate it. Um, hit that like button for me. It means a lot. And um, just like I did last week, I will open up a drink and I'll have a drink. Um, Last week I had like a Crown Royal lemonade already mixed in a can. Um, It's pretty good actually. Um, This week I just, I'll stick to a good old fashioned beer. So this one's made by Sierra Nevada, um, Hazy Little Thing IPA. Um, I actually tried this one in Las Vegas for the first time. Um, When I was working in Las Vegas, my first start as a bar back and then a bartender. I was working at a big timeshare resort. They had a really big um, lazy river and Sierra Nevada actually um, had like two or three beers on draft in our restaurant and also in the pool bars. So I was actually on my day off one time. I went over to um, the pool, right? It was my day off. I went to the pool and um, basically I went to the restaurant where I worked at and I got a couple of to go cocktails. I think they were Mai Tais. I got a couple of Mai Tais. And then I went out to the pool area, right? Did a couple laps in the Lazy River, enjoyed my drinks. When I was out for it, I went to the pool bar to order some beer, right? And um, the rep that, that sells these, that works for this company, was out there at the pool area. So she was talking to the bartenders. Sometimes they do that. You know, they give us, like, free stuff. They give us free bottle openers. They give us free hats, free T-shirts, anything, sunglasses. Like, I have t- I have a pair of um, sunglasses that are made by Tito Zavarka, and I got them from a rep um, at a bar I used to work at. So... Mm-hmm. Anyway, she was there. She was giving the bartender some free stuff. So they're like, hey, this is Gabe. You know, he actually works out um, at the restaurant bar, but he's a bar back and bartender out there. So anyway, she gave me like a free six six pack of them. And um, I just put them on ice and I was enjoying them in the lazy river. So I jump into the lazy river. Um, I would, you know, do a lap around, which takes about 15 minutes or so. And I would just enjoy a drink, you know, jump back out, get another beer, jump back in the lazy river, do some more laps, you know. So anyway, that's when I first discovered this uh, beer. But it's actually a really good beer. I do like it more on draft than I do like it in a in a can. Or, but honestly, it's still a really good beer. It's an IPA, so it's a little bit on the stronger side. But I, I do like them a lot. So cheers, guys. Thanks for being on with me. Yeah, it's a good beer. I really like them. If you like a hazy beer, it's worth looking into. Um, I just know Pattaya really well. And I, Akihabara, Japan. Nice. You know, I love Japan. Um, Japan's really expensive, though, but I really like Japan. Um, believe it or not, I was actually stationed in Japan when I was uh, 18 years old. I joined the, the U.S. Navy. I did eight years in the Navy, um, and I was stationed in Japan for my first two years. So I was stationed in uh, Yokosuka, Japan. Uh, Yokosuka is in um, Kanagawa. That's the area it's called. I guess you'd say like the county, but it's like Kanagawa. Um, probably about a 45, 50 minute train ride away from Tokyo. And, um, yeah, about a 20 minute train ride away from Yokohama. So it was really cool, actually. Um, guys, I'll go over the, how much tips I made just because that's the main part of this live stream. 
and I don't want to um, kind of mislead everyone. So I'll go over how much tips I made uh, working the nightclub last week. Um, so basically, and then I'll go back into some other stuff. But yeah, so basically on Wednesday in credit card tips alone, I made 162.75. So um, yeah, it was 162.75 in credit card. And then in cash tips, I made $80. Um, keep in mind that's after I tip out my bar back 20%. So my bar back, it's 20% of my tips and that's cash and credit card included. So Wednesday was 162.75 credit card and $80 in cash. Friday's a slower day. Um, Fridays, I only made 38.75 credit card and then $14 in cash. It's always my slow shift. Fridays are kind of slow at my, at my bar, at my nightclub. And on top of that, I work at the secondary bar that night. So yeah, that night I usually make make lower tips. Um, and I only work like three hours that 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 night usually. Um, Friday, I'm sorry, Saturday. Saturday was a rough night. Saturday, our credit card system went down at the entire nightclub. So we couldn't take any more credit card after like an hour into my shift. So that impacted sales a lot. It cleared out a lot. Um, even though we had a live ban, I mean, people that didn't have cash or didn't want to use an ATM, it, it really impacted sales big time. So um, Saturday night credit card tips was only $46 and then cash tips was 105. So it was kind of a weird one because, um, you know, the first hour I was working, anyone that opens up a tab, we have to pre-authorize them $50. So the first hour, anyone that opened up a tab with me, I was able to get it up to $50. And then I had to tell them like, you either have to close out or you have to pay cash for the rest of it. So we lost a lot of, a lot of business that day and, um, definitely sales were impacted. So, um, yeah. So then anyway, that night, $46 credit card, $105 in uh, cash tips. And then my hourly paycheck was about $93. Um, keep in mind that I get taxed on that heavily. So I get taxed on the credit card. I get tap taxed on my hourly wage. Plus, I also have to claim my cash tips at the end of the night. So I get taxed on those as well. So my paycheck gets basically hit three times for different taxes. So even though I work like 14 and a half, almost 15 hours, um, you know, so it should be, you're probably thinking that should be at least 200 something dollars. No, it's cause I'm getting taxed on it three different times. So yeah, it gets, it gets taxed heavily. So let's do the math on that real quick. And I'll tell you how much I made, um, working about 15 hours. So, and it, this week was worse than last week. I, I, I made more last week, but it's still fun to do the math. Let's see. So 162, 75 plus 38. 75 plus 46 dollars so i made 247.50 in credit card and then plus my cash tips i made 80 plus i made 14 dollars plus 105 so in tips alone i made 446 that's actually not bad for a slow week but you know it's still lower than last week and then plus my hourly on top of that so i ended up with 539.50 so 539.50 working about 15 hours. So now we'll divide that by 15. So it's about 35, almost $36 an hour. So it's not bad. Um, yeah. So 539, about $35 an hour. So yeah, that's not bad. And that's my nightclub job. I did make more also working my my hotel bartending job. Um, but yeah, I don't really go into that one just because uh, it's not as interesting as the the, the nightclub job, you know. Um, but yeah, that it was a decent week. I mean, it wasn't slow. It wasn't busy at the hotel either. So I made decent money and I also picked up a couple of shifts, um, extra shifts at the hotel too. So normally I work two days a week there. I think last week I worked four days a week and this week I'm also working four days a week there as well. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the money's been steady, you know, so that's a good thing, but this nightclub money, I'm not joking when it's busy, when it, when our busy season, like when all the college students come back, it'll, it'll, it'll be a lot better. Um, I would say at least 150 more in tips per week, at least. So college students come back. <laughs> we need you, but, um, yeah, just in, make some drinks. Um, I don't know if that'd be interesting for live stream just because like I have my bar behind me, you can see the rum chata bottle. That bottle right there is a, um, Smirnoff Damarindo flavored vodka. Um, what's, what else do I have back there? Midori, I have Midori back there. And then just some shot glasses and mixers and stuff. But I don't know if that would be good for live stream, you know, because I'd have to be standing. Then I'd have to move my laptop. Um, 
back over when I'm done mixing drinks, you know? So I, I think that would be better for for videos, but not necessarily for live streaming. But I'll, I could look into it though, see, see how it is. Um, yeah, that, that Smirnoff flavored, uh, or that Smirnoff Damarino flavored is really good actually. Um, it's good in shots and it's also good if you mix it with sangria. So like that soda sangria, if you mix it with that, I let my sister try it. Um, I let her husband try it and they were just like, dude, that's really good. And it's not even hard to make. Literally a shot of, of a Marino vodka and then sangria and you have yourself a drink. So it's really good. Um, I highly recommend that. I got to get some more beer in me. Um, so yeah, but it's really good. But um, I actually am thinking about doing a YouTube video today. What do you guys think of a day in the life of a bartender? Um, I did it before. I was I was um, kind of by myself that day though. I didn't have like um, anyone else helping me at the at the hotel that day. So today I'm not by myself. So I might be able. I have a um, a chef with me. So I might be able to actually kind of do a better video today. You know. Um, but what do you guys think of a day in the life of a bartender video? Do you think it's kind of helpful do you think it's kind of boring let me know what you guys think and this is the camera i use by the way so um this is a dji um pocket it's called the dji osmo pocket 2 this one films in 4k um it's over a year old now actually i've had it probably for about a year and a half maybe a year and three or four months something like that but it's really cool looking so this is a cover um inside of it you'll find a connection so you can connect it that's a usb type c and then a um a lightning connector so you can actually connect it to your cell phone and kind of give yourself some cooler settings and then this is the camera itself by the way um i'll turn it on so you guys can see so see it kind of rotates around that's the camera it's looking at you it has some cool features that has like a follow mode um it has where you can flip it so basically right now it's facing me right i can also flip it to where it goes the opposite direction so now it's facing you guys so this is actually a really cool camera i highly recommend it um, I really like this camera. Battery life has been really good on it. Um, believe it or not, up until this point, I actually bought the ex the external microphone for it, but I haven't had to use it. I've used it on the Las Vegas Strip. I've used it in Fremont. I've used it in my Thailand videos and my Mexico videos. And believe it or not, it picks up my sound quality really, really well. So this is a cool camera for anyone that does any kind of camera or uh, videos or anything like that. I actually recommend this camera a lot if you're ever thinking about doing a um a youtube channel or anything yeah this is a great camera it's made by dji um they're the drone company they make all the big drones and all that there's cool um stuff you can buy for it. i believe they have like an extended battery pack that you can buy personally i think the battery life is great like i've um i've even gone to vegas for like a weekend and i've done hours maybe three or four hours of filming and i had it, i didn't have to charge it at all um so yeah it's a good camera i highly recommend it Picked up my coaster too. Um, do it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. A day in the life of yeah, definitely. Um, I'll probably charge my camera and I'll probably do it today. Um, it's been a it's been what probably two and a half weeks or so since I uh, released the video. So I'll do that. It'll be a good idea. Um, yeah, I gotta make, I gotta keep coming up with some more quality uh, content. Vegas is actually ten days away, so I will be in Las Vegas in ten days. Um, I'll be basically flying in. I got a super cheap flight, $38 round trip. So I got a super cheap flight. So I'll be going out there. Only downside is you can only take a backpack, a personal bag. So, but that's not a big deal. I can make it happen. Um, I'll be staying at the Palms Casino. Palms Casino is actually a really big casino. It's a little bit off the strip. So you will need like an Uber or Lyft to get to the strip, but it's not far enough away where you can't really enjoy the strip either. So it's only probably like a five or six minute Uber right away. Um, but Palms is a really nice casino. They have a huge pool. Um, they actually pumped millions and millions and millions of dollars into their pool um, to basically remodel it right before the beer pandemic hit. Um, and yeah, they were getting some big names out there. They were getting like um, Marshmallow. Um, who else did they get out there? I think they got... Uh, Oh, God, she's a former, uh, I can't think of it. She used to date, uh, I think she used to date Justin Bieber. She was on the Disney Channel before. I can't think of her name. But, yeah, they, they've gotten some big names out there. But, anyway, they pumped millions and millions of dollars into their pool. And then um, when the 
when the beer situation hit, they ended up closing Palms and they didn't reopen it um, for over two years, I want to say, or almost two years. And then they were bought out by a um, an Indian reservation here from Southern California called uh, San Manuel. They bought over that that hotel and they basically reopened it, reinvited the staff from the old company said, hey, you guys are welcome. You guys know this casino, this hotel better than we do. So we welcome all of you guys to come and get your jobs back. So that was a really cool gesture, I think. But yeah, it's reopened now. It's been reopened, I think, for two months or so, something like that. Um, so yeah, they have a really nice pool, um, nice casino. Like I said, it's pretty much newly remodeled, uh, new management. So I'm excited. So I'll do a room tour of it. Um, I'll kind of show you guys around the pool if I can, the casino. And then I'll just do some cool Vegas videos. So Fremont Strip in uh, downtown Las Vegas, it's kind of the old strip. Um, that's so amazing if you guys have never been there. It, it's a lot of fun. So Fremont, maybe you get a video of Fremont, get a video of the strip. And uh, yeah, I'll bring you guys some cool stuff. So I'm, I'm really excited about Vegas. Um, I'll do some cool videos while I'm out there, but it'll be really good. Yeah, Justin, Vegas, it's happening. I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, you know, after living there for, for what, three years, um, it, it's my home away from home. And it's only like a three and a half hour drive, like a 45, 50 minute, I think it's 50, just under one hour, um, you know, plane right away. So, um, and especially when you get flights for $38 round trip, like, dude, there's, there's no reason why not to go for a weekend or for a couple of days, you know? So, and my time off was approved already. So that's good. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for Vegas. So I'll be, I'll be definitely filming some cool content out there, but before then I'll do the day in the life video and, um, I'll probably do a video on micheladas. I know people outside of the U S really don't know what micheladas are, but, um, there's some cool stuff I've experimented with at home of making a cool michelada. So micheladas like beer with also like, um, clamato, like tomato juice. It's really popular in the Mexican culture. Um, if you go to Mexico, it's super popular. You can even get them at like gas stations. <laughs> I've, I've had one made at like a 7-Eleven out there. Like they had like a little table stand at a 7-Eleven in Rosarito and um, they were making them there. So I'll do a video on, on that too. That's kind of one thing I have in mind. I don't know how well it will do, but I've made some at home with like um, mango juice as well. And it actually came out pretty well. I had a couple people try them and they liked it. So I'll do some cool stuff and get my videos going again. So I'm pretty much drinking a beer before I drink my morning coffee. Um, you know, keep in mind, I don't get off work until at the nightclub on Wednesday nights, usually probably between 2.40 to 3 a.m. So um, by the time I get home, it's probably like 3.30 or so. So I don't go to sleep until like 4.30. By the time I get home, shower and all that, you know, have a bite to eat. Yeah, I didn't go to sleep last night until probably around 3.40-ish or so. And then I woke up um, at 10 a.m. So um yeah, just before 10 a.m. So, yeah, I only had a few sips of coffee, so I'm having this pretty much before my coffee. <laughs> um, so yeah, but yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Actually, right after the stream, that's the first thing I'm gonna look up is um, Singapore Airlines. They said I can do um, change my flight reservations before I believe before July 31st uh, at no charge. So I'm actually probably gonna rebook my september thailand trip for uh later on it's either going to be if they'll let me do philippines for a cheap price i'll probably switch it from september to november for philippines and probably only for like anywhere from 10 to 14 days um i just don't want to miss too much work time um i'm trying to save up for like a condo next year hopefully so i don't want to miss too much work time keep in mind as a bartender when you um ask for vacation or anything or you ask for a day off not only are you losing out on your hourly pay but you're losing out on tip money you know when I when I um, when I don't work on a Wednesday, I'm losing out on maybe two fifty to three hundred ish in tips right now. You know, plus my hourly on top on top of that. So um, yeah, I don't want to miss too much time off, but I I do need a vacation. Like I I really do need a vacation. So um, that'll give me a few things. Um, it'll basically let me do Philippines, which I've been, I've really been wanting to do. And it'll also let me um, give myself a couple of more months to save up, hopefully hit the gym for a little bit. And I really need to hit the gym and, um, you know, kind of plan a Philippines trip uh, the right way. In the Philippines, I can bring some really good content out there. I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, I'll definitely take my, my trusty camera with me. 
but yeah, pretty excited about Philippines. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, really excited about this Vegas trip coming up. Um, yeah, but if you guys have any ideas on videos that I can make, not live streaming, but I mean, you know, like just like a eight to 10, 12 minute, uh, bartending video. I'm all ears. Um, I'd really would love to get some content of the nightclub. Unfortunately, the nightclub is just kind of difficult because, um, number one is it's so busy that I don't really have time to film. Usually number two is the people that are coming up directly to my bar and ordering drinks. I don't know if they want to be put on camera or not, you know? So, um, and then number three, I don't know how the owner would feel about that. So I can probably do a video where I'm just like, you know, like on a Friday when I get off work early and just kind of film people around the nightclub. But, you know, again, it's kind of a slower night on a Friday night anyway. So I don't know if you guys would be interested in that, but it is a fun nightclub. Um, you know, there's a lot to look at. It's, it's a cool nightclub. The drinks are really cool there. And, um, the actually, you know, like everything's been going up in price, you know, because of inflation and all this crap going on all over the world. But, um, and in the U S is just, it's, I mean, let's be real. The U S is a hot mess right now, you know, but, um, one thing that the owner has said is that he refuses to, to raise prices. So, um, you know, that's kind of a cool thing. And I had someone yesterday tell me that too. He's like, dude, you guys have not used, uh, you know, you guys have not used, um, or you guys haven't raised your prices on. I told him the owner said he refuses to. So he, you know, he got a lot of respect because of that. Whoa. All right. Um, crap. My coaster just fell on the floor somewhere. Um, use a tripod and set up the camera at your bar. You know what? I actually tried looking for a tripod. Like it's one of those really tall tri tripods that like legit you can stand up, you know, that are like three or four feet tall. I literally looked for one. I checked on Amazon and I checked at Best Buy. I don't know if I'm looking for it, like if I'm searching for the wrong thing, but they didn't have any. Um, I've done it before where like I put like boxes up and then I put like my little, like I have a mini tripod, you know? Um, where I put boxes up and then I put the tripod on top of boxes, but it was just kind of weird. Like it would lean one way or lean the other way, especially on carpet. So I just felt like it was unprofessional, you know, but I did try searching and I, and I want to buy one. I really do want to buy one. So, um, you might know actually with your, with your background, um, being a photographer, if you know, like how I can search for it or where I can find one, I am all ears for that. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll fix my, um, I'll fix my stream labs. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tired of it. I really want a better background. Um, so I'll fix my stream labs for the next one. Um, even if I have to go on Fiverr and hire someone, um, I'll, I'll do it, but yeah, I need to get a better, uh, live stream set up. So, um, yeah. And it was cool. Cause on my old laptop, I had it all set up. Like I had my chat box. Um, it would tell me if I had like any new subscribers at the top. Um, eventually I want to incorporate, but I need to get these live streams up in views like big time. Um, I'm talking about like at least a hundred viewers, but, um, I have my, I have it set up on my old laptop where I even have a spin wheel, you know, and like I'd hit the space bar and it would spin the spin wheel and I can set it up however I want. So like, if I want to put different, like random shots on there, like while I'm on a live stream, um, it'll land on someone like on one of the shots. And then I have to take a shot on the live stream or I can make a shot like on the live stream, you know, like if it lands on say, for example, um, a white gummy bear shot, right. I can say, okay, cool. This is how I make it. And especially with my bar right back there, I can do it. Um, where it lands on a white gummy bear, you know, I can say, okay, this is how you make it, you know, raspberry, cherry, vodka, peach knobs, a uh, splash of pineapple juice, and then shake it up. And then, you know, afterwards splash of seven up or Sprite or Sierra mist or whatever. And then I can drink it, you know, so I have stuff like that set up, but, um, yeah, I have to get stream stream labs incorporated into my, uh, into my, my new laptop. And then, um, yeah, I just have to get my views up. So I'm going to have to play with the, the times and see number one is I'll have to promote it more. And then the number two is I'll have to find out, see if a different time works better. Um, so, cause I know, it, um, I want to say U S is number one for, um, my viewers um for this channel number two is mexico believe it or not number three is uk um i, I believe number four is canada but it, it's kind of changed around the last couple of weeks so um but yeah so i'll have to kind of play around at the times and and uh but yeah I, I have ideas for live streams i just got to get my views up so 
Um, I know some places in the area for camera gear. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'll search again online because I, I must be looking for it, you know, incorrectly or something. Because I, I wouldn't, I, I can't imagine that camera or photographers, um, other vloggers and stuff like that don't need like a stand up tripod that's like three or four feet tall. You know, it has to, there, ha there has to be out there. Like, I, I, I can't imagine that there, there's not anything. Um, maybe do your own eye in the sky camera looking down. No one can really be identified at the bar. Yeah, that's true. That's actually uh, that's actually a good call. Um, I, I can I can look into that. Um, and you know, when I'm at the well at my uh, nightclub, so I'm at the well. You know, here's where my cocktail servers or people can come up to my well and order. Um, you know, my ice bin is below me, but above me, there's actually a shelf where I have my top end liqueurs, my Tito's, my Grand Marnay. Um, what else do I have up there? Different stuff like that um it also has like Kahlua Bailey's and all that um so it might be possible to put it up there with like a clip onto the shelf and then um have it facing directly down so when I'm making drinks you guys are seeing what I'm making so that's actually possible um I, I can look into that one um I just have to tell my bar back like if you're uh, rough around my bar and you break my camera I'm gonna break your fingers no I'm just kidding but yeah yeah I'll, I'll look into it I'll see what I can do because that would be a, a video in its own right there and it'd be really good um here actually i can tell you guys i don't know since i'm not telling you guys where i work at i'm sure i can uh kind of get away with some of this stuff so i worked this was from 9 30 until 1 30 so i clocked in at 9 30 and i basically last call is around 1 30 1 35 a.m right so in four hours my sales were about 1300 in um and alcohol only. I don't do food orders on Wednesday. I don't do none of that. So in four hours, it was about $1,300 in sales. And that's an average night. I've done up to $1,700, $1,800 in sales. And then I think the lowest I usually do is about $1,100. So $1,300 is probably right in the middle. But keep in mind, four hours of work and about $1,300 in sales. Um, that's a lot of that's a lot of drinks I made. Um, beers aren't that expensive at that nightclub. So it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of shots. It's a lot of, um, drinks. I made so many green tea shots yesterday. I made some white gummy bear drinks yesterday. Um, there was a lot of tequila shots that I actually sold yesterday. And then, um, on Wednesday nights, vodka, red bulls and adios mother effers or AMFs or adioses, however you call them are really popular. So I made a lot of adioses last night. Um, vodka Red Bulls, I mean, you guys really don't care to see that. It's just literally vodka and then topped off with Red Bull. Um, what is, I can't think of the most interesting drink I made yesterday. I made a lot of sex on the beaches too. Um, tequila sunrises were fairly popular last night, but Jameson ginger ales, a few Jameson pickleback shots. Um, but it wasn't that bad. Honestly, I didn't make a lot of crazy drinks yesterday. A couple of margaritas. Um, usually I make some LA waters, um, Tokyo teas, um, stuff like that. But last night was actually pretty standard. It wasn't a lot of crazy stuff. So it was really crowded. And then with all the madness that was going on with the underage drinkers and all that, but at least I can say that it wasn't, um, it wasn't a lot of crazy drinks though. So, um, the hotel job yesterday, there was, they were pretty steady though, but it was a lot of vodka sodas, um, a lot of bullet and diet soda stuff like or uh, bullet diet diet cokes um and a lot of a lot of beer yesterday so yeah it wasn't too bad there either um i had a lady come up to the hotel bar yesterday and um basically she got a wine but she wanted it in a plastic cup to take to her room right so you know it's a 12 ounce cup pretty much like if you're filling up eight ounces out of a 12 ounce cup you can pretty much put like one finger two fingers and then, you know, that's eight ounces in a 12 ounce cup, right from the top. And she tried saying, well, yesterday I got a lot. And I was like, well, lady, I was here yesterday. So I didn't serve you no wine yesterday. Oh, well, it was the day before. Like, okay. So first it was yesterday. Now it's the day before. Right. And then she basically said, well, she gave me a lot. I was like, okay. So you knew there was a female bartender that day. So maybe she actually has a point, you know, but I think she was lying. She wanted some free alcohol, but yeah, she was just going off and going off. And I'm just like, really lady? you're really complaining that you want like an extra inch of wine, like one extra ounce of wine in your, uh, in your cup. So, yeah. Um, if, let me see. If there was one drink that 
you would never have to make again, what would it be? Um, probably a mojito. If I'm being honest with you, probably a mojito. Just because it does take some time um, muddling the muddling the, the lime in there. You have to get the mint out there. Technically, you're kind of supposed to smash the mint before you put it in the cup, right? So you have to smash the mint, put it in the cup. You have to get um, the lime, the limes. Then you have to put, I usually put the, the, the rum in there as well. And you have to muddle everything together. And that does take some time. You have to muddle for a good minute or two just to make sure you actually legitimately muddle everything in there. Um, then after that, you have to add the ice and then you have to add the soda water, right? Um, and then simple syrup, basically simple syrup is basically sugar water. Honestly, it's just sugar water. Um, and then you can't shake it because it has soda water. It's carbonated, right? So you have to get my uh, shaker and then your regular pint glass or whatever glass you're serving it in. And basically just kind of go back and forth to kind of mix everything in there. But I would say mojitos, if made properly, it's a really good drink. It, it, it actually really is a good drink. But I would say with that one, um, it's more difficult to get it properly, right? So some people say, I want more simple syrup in there. Basically, they want it sweeter. Other people say, no, that's too sweet. So um, I would say mojitos just because they're more time consuming. And then on top of that, some people want them sweeter. Other people don't want them as sweet. Um, yeah, and it's kind of sad because it's a really good drink. It's refreshing, um, you know. But yeah, I would say mojitos is probably that one drink. Um, the way that I make old fashions are not that bad. Basically, the way I make old fashions is just a sugar cube, the bitters, um, you know, and then muddling that up. If you go to another place, like um, there's an American Legion. It's a bar for like veterans that have served in the military. Um, they have really, really inexpensive drink prices. Um, so I, I go in there like supporting veterans, you know, especially people. Um, I have it. I have it fairly easy. Honestly, I served my time. I got out. I use my GI Bill. But there's so many veterans out there that, um, you know, they they got they got injured. You know, they lost an arm. They lost a leg. You know, they they have PTSD. They're you know, they're um, they're kind of scarred for life. You know, um, so I, I like to go there a lot. I like to um, you know whatever I can to help out. Um, every holiday, like Memorial Day, Veterans Day, they do a moment of silence for the fallen. Um, so it's a great place. But anyway. Someone ordered an old-fashioned there about two weeks ago, and they actually muddle an orange slice. They muddle a cherry, uh, simple syrup, and they muddle all that stuff in there as well. So that can be a little bit of a pain in the butt if you work somewhere that wants you to make it that way. But from what I know, the way that it's a true um, old-fashioned is you're not supposed to muddle an orange or a cherry or any of that in there. The only thing that um, an orange slice should have anything to do with that is actually an orange peel. Or, you know, just the, the out, outer part of the orange slice. And then you twist it and you're supposed to rub it around the rim of the glass um, to do a couple of things. Number one, if they're not going to use a straw, it gives them a little bit of that flavor. And then number two is it gives it that that um, smell. So when you're bringing it to your uh, base, you can smell that orangey smell to it. But, yeah, you're not supposed to muddle an orange. From everywhere I've worked at, you're not supposed to do that. But some places do, do that and some... Like chain restaurants will actually call for that, so it might not even be the bartender's fault. Um, other than that, a lot of drinks are build drinks, you know, especially at the nightclub. Build drinks means you don't have to shake, you don't have to do anything like that. So Long Islands, Adioses, Tokyo Teas, LA Waters, um, those are all build drinks. You just put ice, build them right into the into the cup, and then here you go, enjoy, buddy. Um, Margaritas are supposed to be shaken. Margaritas are supposed to 100% be shaken. But if you go somewhere like a nightclub or something, they, they may not shake it. And honestly, it is what it is. I mean, I'd still drink it, no problem. But yeah. Um, Have I ever served anyone that's famous in Vegas? No, not that I can think of. There used to be a guy that... um. He used to go to my timeshare resort, my very first bartending and barback job. He was a famous um, gospel, uh, what's it called, a producer. He was a famous gospel producer. And I know he was actually a millionaire. He was technically a millionaire. Um, he would come in and he would always get the same thing. He would get like a, um, he would order like ribs. And then um, he would get like one or two mojitos, talking about mojitos. He would get a couple of mojitos. 
and he would tip like 40 or 50 dollars on like a 40 dollar check 50 dollar check so he pretty much tip the tab um so he, i don't think he was famous though i think he was pretty much low-key um he did offer he was in love with um one of the servers that i used to work with at that resort he was like in love with her like he told her he was like go out on a date with me he even said like he wanted to marry her and all that um one time he was trying to get her to go on a date with him and she was like no i really don't know this guy outside of it so um she was off of work she was playing keno at my bar and you know um ordering a couple of drinks for me and she kept telling him like he was at the bar too drinking mojitos and he was like you know hey um go out with me come on go out with me and she's like no i thank you but I, I i really don't know you you know i have kids at home i'm, I'm good and he was like come on just one date I'll, I'll even get a limo for us a limo pick us up and wherever you want to go on the strip you know on me and finally she was like you know what i'll go if gabe goes and i was like oh man i don't want to be no third wheel you know um it, it didn't end up happening but yeah um he was like that's fine he can come too but he's like as long as i get some quality time with you that's all i care about and she like kind of was like would you go with me and he was like look like i'm saying i just want time with her alone so you want to go you know like drinks on me whatever but yeah it, we didn't end up going but um i guess that's probably the closest to it um i got to see a couple of ufc stars at the um casino i used to work at in las vegas they were doing like a meet and greet type thing, but he, he didn't order. Actually, one of them was a guy. One of them was a chick, um, but they, they didn't they weren't drinking. They didn't order anything. Um, I would say that's probably it. But yeah, I, I had a, unfortunately with celebrities, I don't have any cool, cool Vegas stories. I wish I did. Um, but yeah, there's always like um, there's always like cool people and all that that, that stop by. Um, I went to where was I at? It was somewhere in Fremont in Las Vegas. And um, basically, I went in to play cards, right? I went to a table. I went to play table games. And I think it was blackjack. And when I sat down at the table, um, I was wearing a Dallas Cowboys hat, right? And the 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 dealer, the blackjack dealer was like, oh, wow, you're a Cowboys fan. She's like, you literally just missed him. Um, there was a Dallas Cowboys player here. He was, he was here playing at the table. I was like, no way. She's like, yeah. She's like, you literally missed him by 30 seconds or so. She's like, you must have passed right by him when you were coming in, like to this area. He probably passed right by you. And then I started thinking about it. And sure enough, there was a guy that was wearing kind of glasses. He had his hat lowered like a lot, like you know, like he didn't want to be seen at all. He had his hat as low as possible. And um, yeah, he was wearing like this, like kind of like a business casual suit. And when I thought about it, and she told me his name, I was like, oh man. Now that I think about it, that did look like him. I was like, yeah, that was him. So yeah, I passed right by a Dallas Cowboys player um when i went to sit at the table but i literally missed him by like 30 seconds to say i was able to gamble with him you know so that kind of that kind of sucked but yes he said he was she said he was super low-key really chill quiet like wasn't a brag or anything you know wasn't a big drinker so he was really really nice guy just mellow and chill um so yeah that's probably only my only like uh celebrity experiences in vegas though but um other than that it was cool um Sorry, I just got a um a reply on. But yeah, there was there was um I do have Vegas stories for days, trust me. I can go into Vegas stories for days. Um I really want to I really want to save that like some of my Vegas stories though for when I have at least like a good 40 50 uh, people on my live stream cuz those are some good stories like I'll kind of go into uh I'll tell a little bit but I don't want to tell too much. I'll save it for another live stream, but like there was two girls i was working at the casino bar right it was the graveyard shift so midnight to 8 a.m and there's these two um what's a nice way to put this working girls that were at the bar and they they fought they started arguing and fighting from across the bar they just it was a crazy one right there um there's another one i was working at another bar in the same casino and two like best friends just started fighting one ended up with a blood uh, a broken nose it just ended up on the floor like his bar stool just tipped over he was right there like that just blood coming from his nose um yeah believe me when it comes to vegas i have stories for days what some people would try to tip me in vegas was crazy people would try to tip me some illegal uh substances i'll leave it at that so yeah vegas is a whole different ballpark but 
you know, Vegas could be fun. There could be some good money there. And I, I love Vegas. Like, I actually miss Vegas, you know. Um, like, when I get off the nightclub at, like, 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m., 3 a.m., whatever time I get off, you know, in Vegas, it's a 24-hour city. So you'd be able to go find a bar, a little, you know, right by your house or go to any casino and you can get drinks out there and gamble whatever you want you know out here everything's closed it's a it's a california law where you can't serve alcohol past 2 a.m you can't even go to a 7-eleven or a gas station and buy beer after 2 a.m so i miss that about vegas you know because sometimes i don't go to sleep until 4 35 a.m anyway so i would love to be able to go out and have a drink myself after work so yeah unfortunately it just out here it's a different it's it's just different um, and if someone said their drink isn't strong enough, what do you do? Uh, it really depends. Um, if they're a regular and I know they're not kind of full of crap, um, I, I actually would probably just get my bottle and just kind of, you know, top it off. Um, there's ways to make it appear like you're pouring more than you're actually pouring. So, you know, like if your cup is right here and you kind of pour from high, you know, that drop of the alcohol makes it look like you're pouring more than you're actually pouring, even though you're not. But if someone says, like, hey, you just made me this drink, um, it doesn't appear strong enough, I'll usually give them another one or two count pour real quick if they're a regular. If I don't know them, um, I'll have to kind of tell them, like, hey, look, um, you know, I can give you a double, but I'm going to I'm gonna charge you for it. So, um, yeah, because it's sad, but we live in a reality where we live in a world where people try to get something for nothing, you know? So as much as you want to take care of the guests, like sometimes they're going to pull stuff like that, you know? And what's kind of tied in with that as well is, and it's becoming more and more of a popular thing, especially with the younger, the younger crowd where they ask for easy ice. They think that because they get less ice, they're going to get more, more liquor in it, right? That's not the case. You're going to get more mixer. So if you're earning a Jack and Coke, a Jack Daniels and Coke, and you ask for easy ice, you're going to get more Coke. You're not going to get more uh, Jack Daniels. That, number one, is we're either using a jigger, so the jigger is going to measure it, or number two is we're using a pour count in our head, right? So one, two, three, four. So you're not going to get more Jack Daniels or more vodka or whatever you're ordering. But it's becoming so increasingly popular for people to say, you know, easy ice, thinking they're going to get more alcohol, and you're not. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's just what it is. Um, but yeah, if they're regulars, I try to take care of them because, you know, they're regulars and I know they're not full of crap. But if they're not regulars and you have to kind of find another way to uh, to address it, you know. So we're approaching almost my 58 minute mark and there's only a couple people online. So um, I'll probably start kind of trying to wrap it up. But I appreciate you guys for joining. Um, like I said, I really got to get my numbers up. I have to get my numbers up. So. Um, I'll work on Streamlabs, I promise. I'll try to get it up so I have a better uh, better setup and a better background. Um, so, yeah, for sure, I'll be working on that for next stream. Um, I might change the time of next week's live stream just because I have to kind of experiment with what time might help um, me get more more uh, viewers on here. Because um, I realize in the middle, in the U.S., it's the middle of the day. It's 1 p.m. Um, Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So I realize a lot of people are working, you know. Um, so I, I'm going to kind of experiment with the times a little bit, see what I can figure out with that. So maybe I'll try it like an evening stream next time or, you know, I'll fluctuate a little bit and see what I can do. Or if not, I'll, I might stick to this time. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Justin, I, I I don't know. Do you know Streamlabs at all? I, I actually might take you up on that. If um, if you know Streamlabs at all, I can probably use the help. Um, all right, Prep, thanks. I appreciate you being on. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. And I think last week you were going to work at this time. So I hope, or I think so. Yeah. So if you are, I hope you have a good shift as well. And yeah, I'm hoping for those good tips too. save up for that, uh, save up for that, um, vacation, you know, but yeah, Justin, I might hit you up on that. If you know Streamlabs at all, cause I could use the help setting it up, but as always, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't hit the like button for me, please, it means a lot. YouTube kind of promotes everything, the more likes it gets. So, I appreciate y'all so much. Um, please do not drink and drive. Please drink responsibly. If you have any bartender related questions, any like if you want any suggestions on good drinks or cocktails or anything, let me know. And also let me know in the chat what kind of drinks you like to make too so I can keep them in mind for future videos and stuff. But as always, I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Make it happen. Make it count. If you're in a different part of the world, have a good night. But thank you so much. Appreciate it. 
take care and yeah, happy drinking. <laughs>